not your son, my lord. His greeting, sir, hath been at my charge. I have so often blessed to acknowledge him, but now I am very good. I cannot conceive you. Sir, this young fellow's mother could. Though this may came something saucily into the world before he was sent for, yet was his mother fair. There was good sport in his making, and the horse left must be acknowledged. And it's no fault. I cannot wish the fault undone, the doing her being so proper. But I have, sir, a son by order of law, some year elder than this, who is yet no dear in my account, my son Edgar. Exactly? Edmund, do you know the noble gentleman? No, my lord. My lord of Kent, remember him hereafter as my honorable friend, Mr. Sincere Meantime, we shall express our darker purpose. Give me the map there. Know that we have divided in three our kingdom, which is our fast intent, to shake all cares and business from our age, conferring them on younger strengths, where we unbirth and crawl toward death. A son of Cornwall, and you, a no less loving son of Albany, we have this hour a constant will to publish our daughter's several dowers, that future strife may be prevented now. Which of you shall we say doth love us most? that we, our largest bounty, may extend where nature doth with merit challenge. Goneril, our eldest born, speak first. Sir, I love you more than words can wield the matter, dearer than eyesight, space, and liberty, beyond what can be valued rich or rare, no less than life, with grace, health, beauty, honor, as much as child there loved your father found, a love that makes breath poor and speak unable, beyond all manner, of so much I love you. What shall Cordelia do? Love and be silent. Of all these bounds, even from this line to this, with, plent with shadowy forests and champagnes rich, with plenteous rivers and wide skirted meads, we make thee lady. To thine and Albany's issue be this perpetual. What say our second daughter, our dearest Regan, wife to Cornwall, speak. Sir, I am made of the self-same metal that my Then poor Cordelia, and yet not so, since I am sure my love's more richer than my tongue. To thee and thine heredity ever remain this ample third of our fair kingdom, unless in faith, validity, or pleasure than that conferred upon Goneril. And now, our joy, although the last, not least, what can you say to draw third more opulent than your sisters? Speak. Nothing, my lord. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing shall come of nothing. Speak again. Unhappy that I am, I cannot think. My heart is in my mouth. I love you, your majesty, according to my bond, nor more nor less. How, how, Cordelia? Mend your speech a little, lest it may mar your fortune. Good, my lord, you have begotten me, bred me, loved me. I return your duties back as our right fit, obey you, love you, and most honor you. Why am my sister's husband, if they say they love you all? Happily, when I shall wed, the Lord will take my place, and after I have my love him, have my fair duty. Sure, I shall never marry like my sisters, to love my father all. But goes my heart with this? Ah, uh, good, my lord. So young, yet so untender. So young, my lord, and true. Let it be so. Thy truth then be thy dower. For by the sacred radiance of the sun, by the mystery, the peccant, and the night, by all the operation of the orb from whom we do exist and cease to be, here I disclaim all my paternal care, propinquity, and property of blood. And as a stranger to my heart and me, hold thee from this forever. Good, my lady. Cease, Kent. Come not between the dragon and his wrath. I loved her most and thought to set my rest upon her kind nursery. Hence, in the void, my sight. What wilt thou do, old man? Thy youngest daughter does not love thee least. Kent, on thy life, no more. My life I never held, but as a pawn for ways against thy enemy. No fear to lose it, thy safety being the motive. Out of my sight! Be better over here, and let me show him in the two black and thine arms. Oh, Basil! Miscreant! Yes, sir! Oh. We're there! Kent, 
turn thy hated back upon our kingdom. Away, by Jupiter, that shall not be revoked. Fare thee well, king. This thus thou wilt appear. Freedom is hence, and banishment here. Thus hence, O princes, bid you all adieu. So save the Lord court and a country new. Where is Cordelia, that art most great, King Thor? Most choice forsaken, most loved despised. Thee and my virtues here I seize upon. Be it lawful, I take out what's cast away. God's gods, tis strange that from the cold is neglect. Our love should kindle to influence death. My valorous daughter, came thrown to my chance, is queen of us, of ours, and our fair prince. Thou hast her, friends. It will be thine, for we have no such daughter. Or shall I ever see that face of hers again? Bid farewell to your sister. The jewels of our father. With washed eyes, Cordelia leaves you. I know you what you are, and as a sister I'm most loathed to call your fault, as they are named. You dwell our father, to your professed bosom I can him. But yet, alas, I stood within his risk. I prefer him to a better thing. So, farewell to you both. Prescribe that us our duty. Brown? Not only, sir, this your all license full, but other of your insolent retinue. To early carping quarrel, breaking forth in rank, and not to be endured riots. Are you our daughter? Come, sir, I would you would make use of that good wisdom, whereof I know you are fraught and put away. These dispositions and wait to transform you from what you rightly are. May not an ass know when the cart draws the horse. Come, any here know me? not Lear? <laughs> Does Lear walk thus? Speak thus? Where are his eyes? Who is it who can tell me who I am? Lear's shadow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. His admiration, sir, is much in the favor of other new pranks. I do beseech you to understand my purposes aright. You are old and reverend, you should be wise. Here do you keep a hundred and knife and choir. Many for the sword <coughs> for me for force to make thee worth them. Blast and fogs upon thee. Yea, that come to this, let it be so, for if I left a daughter, who I'm sure is kind and comfortable, when she hears of thee with her nails, she shall play thy wolf's visage. Thou shalt find that I will resume the shape, but thou dost think I've cast off forever. Trouble thee, my child, farewell. We'll no more meet, no more see one another. But thou art my flesh, my blood, my daughter. Or rather, the seeds that is in my flesh, that I must needs call mine. Thou art a boil, a plague sore, an embossed carbuncle in my corrupted blood. But I'll not chide thee. Let shame come when it will. I do not call it. I do not bid the thunder bear shoot, nor tell tales of thee to high judging Jove. Mend when thou canst. Be better at thy leisure. I can be patient. I can stay with Regan. I and my hundred knights. Not altogether so. I looked not for thee yet, nor am provided for your fit welcome. What, fifty followers? Is it not well? What should you need of more? Why might not why might not you, my lord, receive attendance from those that she calls servants or from mine? Why not, my lord? If then that chance to slack you, we could control them. If you will come to me, I entreat you to bring but five and twenty. To no more will I give place or notice. 
I gave you all. And in good time you gave it. Go with thee. My fifty at the dust double five and twenty. Thou art twice her love. Hear me, my lord. What need you five and twenty? Ten or five to fall in a house where twice so many have commanded ten you. What need one? Oh, reason not the need. Our basest beggars are in the poorest thing superfluous. Allow not nature more than nature needs. Man's life is cheap as beasts. Thou art a lady, only to go warm were gorgeous. Why, nature needs not what thou gorgeous wearest. Scarce keeps thee warm. But for true need, <laughs> you heaven, give me that patience. Patience thy need. You see me here, you God. Poor old man, full of grief if it be you who stir these daughters' hearts against their fathers, fool me not so much as to bear it tamely, but touch me with noble anger, and let not women's weapons, water drops, stain my man's cheeks. No, you unnatural hags, I shall have such revenges on you both, that all the world shall I'll do such things. What they are, yet I know not. But they shall be the terrors of the earth. Think I'll weep? No, I'll not weep. I have full cause for weeping. But my heart shall break into a hundred thousand flaws ere I'll weep. Oh, fool, I shall go mad! Simple answer, for we know the truth. 
means the bloody knife. Who's dead? Speak, man. Turn thee away. She's noble Kent, your friend. A plague upon you, murderers, traitors all. I might have saved her, but oh, she's gone forever. Cordelia, Cordelia, stay a little. Oh, what's thou say? Her voice was ever soft and gentle and low. Makes a thing of me. I killed the slave that was a hanging me. This is a dull sight. Are you not Kent? The same, this her and Kent. All is cheerless, dark, and deadly. Thy eldest daughters have foredone themselves and desperately are dead. Aye, so I think. He knows not what he says, and fain it is their presentments to him. Very good, but. And my poor fool is hanged! No, no, no light! What should a dog, a horse, a rat, have life in the no breath at all? I'll come no more. Never, never, never. Thank you. Do this button. Thank you, sir. Do you see this? Look on her. Look, her lips. Look there. Look there. He faints. My lord, my lord. Break, heart, I pray thee, break. Look up, my lord. That's not his ghost. Oh, let him pass. He hates the much that upon the rack of this tough world would stretch him out longer. He is gone indeed. Bear them from him. Our present business is general woe. Friends of my soul, you twain rule in this realm, and the board states sustain. I have a journey, sir, shortly to go. My master calls me. I must not say no. The weight of this sad time we must obey. <coughs> Speak what we feel, not what we ought to say. For the oldest have four months. And we that are young shall not receive so much, nor live so long. 